I tell you, going to the moon when you went to the moon, that was such an incredible feat. And we still today are like, how did they do that? You know, it's incredible. Know, say, you know, what was interesting is we went into the moon. We never saw the moon. We were going backwards. Oh, gotcha. Because we had to do a retro burn to stay in lunar orbit. So we had to be pointing back along our track. So we never saw the moon. And I, and I used to think, boy, I sure hope Mission Control's got this right. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a little bit of a connection. We both went to the United States Military Academy at West Point. Well, I, I know you graduated 34 years after I did. I hate to think of my age. <laughs> yeah, you had a unique thing. You left West Point where, you know, typically 90, I don't know, 98% of the graduates will go into the Army, but you went to the Air Force. So talk well, to me Shane, through that. I, that yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. As a matter of fact, I went to West Point with the absolute idea that I was going to go in the Army. But I had a couple of very interesting tactical officers while I was there. They kind of talked me into going to the Air Force because it was more technical back then. Mm -hmm. uh, what a joke that was because the Army turned out to be more technical than the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. All right. What made you decide or how did you decide to want to be an astronaut? Well, I'm not sure I decided, Shane. <laughs> um, I was following a career path, uh, the test pilot career path. Well, I had all the squares filled. Uh, when NASA had an application process, I said, throw my name in wow. and uh, just see what would happen and got, got select. Uh, through all those years, I never, ever really gave the space program a thought hmm. because I just thought there were so many. In my, I don't know how many there were in your selection process, in your selection group. There were about, I think about 6,000 you know, total. Six thousand we started total. with, and yeah. how many did they pick? Picked eleven. See, that's that's unbelievable. Oh. With me, there were eight hundred and thirty, and they picked nineteen. It's still a pretty small percentage. Oh, it's yeah. like yeah. two percent or something. But I had never given it. I don't know about you. What, how did, did you always wanted to be that? You know, I kind of always wanted to be one. When I was a young child, I was watching you gentlemen go to the moon, walk on the moon, do those incredible. Here we go, missions. inferring age so, again. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good thing <laughs> this time <laughs> because I mean, you and your teams and the whole NASA team back then were just, you know, obviously breaking new ground, just doing things that nobody ever, ever thought we could ever do. And uh, as I was sitting there watching a black and white TV with my family and the whole nation would stop in these moments. It just struck me that I wanted to do something. I didn't know if I wanted to be an astronaut, but I would do something like you guys were doing, something incredibly brave, things that had never been done before, and, mm -hmm. and just kind of really stretch my boundaries. And I kind of had that kind of mentality throughout my high yeah. school and college years even. I got here in the class of 2004. They named us the Peacocks um, because peacocks never fly, right? <laughs> so that was a great, great... Uh, oh, but they look good. <laughs> yeah, that's, see, that's what they said. They're going to parade us around in front of the cameras and you're never yeah, going to fly them. Right. Um, having that going in was not a great start for us. Uh, we had people in the office tell us, hey, you're never going to fly. Like, you are never going to fly and shuttle's going to be done. The next vehicle's not going to be here and you're going to be in this weird mm. place and you're never going to fly. So that's kind of what we were hearing all the time in the office, but, you know, still... Yeah, a us. lot of patience. <laughs> for us, uh, patience was key, but also it was just great being here and part yeah. of the team and helping out whatever we were going to do at the time, right? Endeavor on at the 180. One thing I want to talk about on Space Shuttle is the way we landed, right? Very different than what you did and experience. So I want to hear your comments as well. But as you know, the shuttle landed on a runway. We only had one shot at it. So that was That's the, that the was part the real of that I would have loved. You had one chance, yeah. right? <laughs> and so uh, the training really comes in and the whole team, the whole crew is in miscontrol as well as working to make sure we get that one chance right. See, the problem with the way we came, I, I, I love the fact that the shuttle landed on a runway because you got control. Right. When you come down in parachutes, you ain't got control. <laughs> Once those parachutes are open, you're at their mercy. And on our flight, we lost one. So we came down in two chutes, which was kind of interesting. The, the Navy SEALs were in the water 10 seconds after we landed. Very they impressive. were unbelievable. Very impressive. Well, you guys didn't have to do that. Nope. See, you didn't you didn't have the pleasure of having Navy SEALs come yeah, and rescue you. I'm part you. of a team that's planning for our future launches here with Commercial Crew and Orion. And we're going to have, you know, some water landings there. So oh, you'll, you'll kind of go through the same thing, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. For everybody that doesn't know, we're flying with the Russians on the, their Soyuz spacecraft. The missions are generally about six months long, so much different than shuttle or Apollo, yeah, right. right? So the duration is kind of the big deal now. So we've had a person go up for a year, as you probably know. And we got some people coming that are actually in space right now that will be up there for 10 or 11 months. So it's a different world. Seems uh, to me like that's a really important thing, though, is that we've got to find out what's going to happen long term. But my question is, what do you see in the future for you? 
Uh, for me, well, mm-hmm. as you know, most of our time is doing technical jobs, and that's what I'm doing now. And I'm working with uh, both the commercial providers, Boeing and SpaceX, to work on their landing day ops. Well, you got 30 years in since you graduated. Correct. So, so where do you go from here? <laughs> I don't know. It's a great question. My wife asks me every day, where, what are we doing next? Um, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, for me, uh, you're always you know, serving, right? So we're serving our nation in that case. Yeah. When I came to NASA, that did not change at all. And when I just went on my recent space station mission, when I'm up there for six months, I realized that, you know, I'm not even doing missions just for NASA. I'm doing missions for all of humanity yeah. and the experiments we're doing. So it just took that serving, that common mission I kind of had of serving others to a much higher level when I'm realizing I'm doing things for all of humanity, not just for the U.S. or not just for NASA. 